Once again, Greg Miller and Jessica Chobot. Hard to believe, Ed Boone, only 29 today. Thanks for waiting for me, by the way. Hey, you know what? They say go, I walk. Just do it. You know what I mean? Okay, well, this is Anyways, time. the past year has given us a lot of important lessons. Yes, yeah, we're doomed. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's that, of course, and that yeah. nothing can stop Nintendo. No, that also is true. So no matter who you are or what your system of preference, uh, there's a good chance that Nintendo has influenced your work in some way. And that's why here today to present this year's Lifetime Achievement Award is Executive Vice President of Operations at Nintendo of America, Don James. <laughs> good evening. So to get serious for a minute, tonight I have the honor of presenting the Academy's Lifetime Achievement Award to Genyo Takeda. I work directly as well as indirectly with Takeda-san for my entire career at Nintendo, but as he is a very humble individual, this may be the first time many of you are hearing his name. While he prefers to operate outside the spotlight, his leadership, forward thinking, brilliant engineering, and innovative ideas have been an essential part of Nintendo's DNA and have had a substantial impact on our industry and the consumers who have enjoyed the products he created. Takeda-san started at Nintendo fresh out of college in 1972. He is credited as Nintendo's first game designer and in 1974 began mentoring a fledgling creator you've maybe heard of, Shigeru Miyamoto. Takeda-san has always been willing to develop young talent. He gave me the opportunity to be the voice of the announcer in the arcade classic Punch-Out! and to be the producer of a Nintendo 64 title in what became a learning experience I will never forget in which I am deeply grateful. I will never forget when he gave me approval to work on that game. I was sitting in my office and he stopped by at the door. He looked at me and he simply said, you have to work very hard. And that was it, he walked on. <laughs> and having no experience as a game producer at all, I went off and created a game. As an individual, he has a great sense of humor, tempered by serious nature that brings out the best in those who've been privileged to work with him. His ability to balance the hard mechanics of technology with the psychology of why people do what they do inspired many products that I'm sure you'll recognize. Take a look. Born in Osaka, Japan and a graduate of Shizuoka University, Genyo Takeda has been cited as Nintendo's first video game designer and instrumental to the company's pivot from consumer electronics to games in the 1970s. His tenure spans from an early start as a game designer to a pioneer in some of Nintendo's most influential divisions and innovations. The story begins in the mid-70s with a new arcade concept EVR race. The Takeda design was an arcade cabinet wagering game featuring a simple video horse race simulator that up to six players could bet on. The game was a first step in what would become Nintendo's successful venture into arcade gaming. As Nintendo saw the value of arcade games, Mr. Takeda designed the boxing game Punch-Out, which was released in Japan in 1983 and globally in 1984. Punch-Out introduced gamers to Glass Joe, Bald Bull, Mr. Sandman, and many others who would become unforgettable video game characters. Punch-Out's blend of clever immersion, memorable characters, and gripping gameplay made it an instant classic. Punch-Out's success would flourish with an arcade sequel and several console versions. Super Punch-Out introduced new boxers to the arcade game, while the NES version was titled Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. For many people that grew up with the Famicom and NES, ultimate satisfaction was achieved when Mike Tyson complimented your finger speed. Adding to these early successes, the adventure game Star Tropics was produced, directed, and written by Mr. Takeda and released in 1990. Star Tropics was lauded for its expansive world, offering hours of exploration and commended for its creative gameplay. The sequel, Zoda's Revenge Star Tropics 2, was also met with critical acclaim, praise
praised for combining its predecessor's fantastic exploration with an even deeper story. One of Mr. Takeda's goals for our industry was to amplify technology's power as much as possible, to give surprises to the world. That goal was the inspiration that created the Nintendo 64 console. In his first surprising move, he adopted a cutting-edge 3D graphics system, which was generally used for workstations at the time. In another unique tactic, Mr. Takeda went beyond the boundaries of Japanese technical partners to reach out to companies in the West. But perhaps the most tangible innovation Takeda brought to the Nintendo 64 was what's considered the first analog game controller. With its novel blend of ergonomics and functionality, the N64 controller was a tremendous hit with gamers and set a new standard for analog controllers. Thanks to its innovative graphics and groundbreaking controls, the Nintendo 64 was named Time's Machine of the Year in 1996, with the magazine referring to it as 64 Bits of Magic. While leading the development of the Wii console, Mr. Takeda chose to go in a boldly different direction. Competitors emphasized CPU and GPU power, but Takeda wanted to make a video game console that was accessible to everyone. Along with Nintendo's Satoru Iwata and Shigeru Miyamoto, Mr. Takeda sought to redefine the concept of the game controller through motion sensors. While competitors moved towards more complicated controllers, he envisioned a controller that anyone could use, regardless of gaming experience. With its motion sensor controls, Wii was a tremendous success for Nintendo that brought gaming to a mass audience. A creative force that has made substantial contributions in gaming hardware and software, Genyo Takeda has made an extraordinary impact on the video game industry. His leadership and vision have greatly contributed to Nintendo's momentum. He has set standards, changed expectations, and entertained countless gamers. In short, the video game business wouldn't be where it is today without him. And tonight, the Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences has the honor to present Genyo Takeda with its Lifetime Achievement Award. I was going to say, please come up. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you to the Academy. I am so honored to be here tonight and grateful to receive this Lifetime Achievement Award after celebrating 45 years of aging and gray hairs in, in this industry. And I deeply appreciate all of you being here to share it with me. Okay, long time ago in 1971, I majored in electrical engineering and graduated college. The year 1971 was the most memorable year since it was also the year that Intel launched first market, you know, first commercially available microprocessor. And it was the small but the precious seeds from this you know, from like launch that lead to the beautifully blooming video game industry today. Video games are an interactive orchestration among arts, psychology-based commercialism, and technology. However, the technology itself is often considered to be the role of the second violin in the orchestra, so I decided to accept this award so that I could stand up here as a representative of unsung heroes of home video game platform design engineers, not only for Nintendo, but also for all other game machines. Thank you.
And I'm also grateful to the many amazing colleagues and staff members from the United States, Europe, Taiwan, Korea, China, and the Japanese engineers whose support are the reasons I am up here right now. Working in video games is a very hard job, but it's also hard fun. It's both challenging and enjoyable. I do have one ask for all the Academy members. Please continue enjoying the hard fun and the work you do to satisfy the worldwide video game lovers and to keep them smiling. Thank you. Okay, in closing, I would like to extend a special thanks to the late Mr. Hiroshi Yamauchi, also known as the grandfather of the home video game industry. Although he has passed away, he trusted me and gave me the opportunity to lead the technology effort at Nintendo. Thank you very much. Thank you.